Hi there, in this video we'll be reviewing how and where the information or data is stored in Houdini. In general, an attribute is a quality or character ascribed to or considered to belong to or be inherent in a person or thing. For instance, attributes for a person could be ID number, age, height, weight, kindness, attractiveness. Attributes for a car could be brand, model, cost, power, autonomy, weight, color, length, width, height. Even the components of the object or person can also have attributes. For instance, car wheels can have brand, model, diameter, width, pressure. In 3D applications, we are dealing with geometry and its components. Therefore, we are only interested in attributes that are descriptive, objective, and measurable. In Houdini, geometry is conformed by primitives, and primitives may be conformed by components such as points and vertices. A point is a basic component defined by a position in space. Here we have three points in space. We cannot define directly a primitive on the points. Vertices must be defined first. A vertex is a reference to a point. Once we have vertices defined, then we can define a primitive on them, in this case primitive 0. To have a new adjacent primitive, first we need another point, in this case point 3. Again, vertices need to be defined before creating a primitive. Now, based on vertices 0, 1, 2, 1 and 3, 0, we can define the new primitive, in this case primitive 1. It is important to note that without a point you cannot define a vertex. Without vertices you cannot define a primitive. If you delete a primitive, their vertices will also be deleted but it is possible to delete the primitives and leave the points only. We spend some time in learning the basics of geometry components because attributes and components have a direct relationship. And in Houdini, attributes are no more than named values stored on geometry or its components. If the attributes are stored once at the geometry level, they are called detail attributes. If they are stored at each primitive, they are called primitive attributes. If they are stored at each vertex, they are called vertex attributes. If they are stored at each point, they are called point attributes. But what kind of values or data can we store as attributes? The data stored as attributes can be of four types. Float numbers, integer numbers, vectors, and strings. Some attributes are predefined by Houdini. For instance, every point has a position attribute called P. P is a vector type attribute as it defines the point position by the three space coordinates X, Y, and Z. Another predefined attribute is PTNum, which is the point number and is an integer type. Other attributes are calculated by Houdini. For instance, when you execute a particle simulation, Houdini calculates for each point the velocity v, which is a vector attribute, the age of the particle, which is a float attribute, the acting force, which is a vector attribute. And of course you can define custom attributes at any level. For instance, at point level I could define an integer attribute called my ID to assign a custom integer number to each point. In Houdini, you can view attributes using the geometry spreadsheet. In this tab, you can see the values stored as point attributes, as vertices attributes, as primitive attributes, or as detail attributes. To explain the basics of the geometry spreadsheet, I have set up a Houdini interface with the tree view at the top left pane, the geometry spreadsheet at the bottom left pane, the scene view at the top right pane, and the network view at the bottom right pane. Again, 
Don't worry about the layout or menus or icons. In upcoming videos, we'll be reviewing in detail the interface and navigation. For now, it is more important to be focused on the concepts. At the object or async level, I have created an object called GeoContainer. Inside this network, I have put three geometries so that we have information to display on the geometry spreadsheet. We have a point, a line, and a box. In the geometry spreadsheet, we have four buttons. The first one to display attributes for points, the second for vertices, the third for primitives, and the fourth for detail. Let's select and display my point. You can see it in the scene view and it has the number zero assigned. In the geometry spreadsheet, let's click on the points button. There is just one row that corresponds to the existing point. Point number zero has only one attribute, which is position P. And as it is a vector, the three components X, Y and Z are displayed. If we click on the vertices button, there are no attributes defined. The same if we click in the primitive button or the detail button. Now let's select and display my line. In the scene view, you can see there are two points, point zero and point one. And of course, the line. If we click on the points button, we have two rows, one for each point and each point has the P attribute. Now, if we click on the vertices button, we can see two vertices. The first one is a reference to point zero and the second one is a reference to point one. These vertices are necessary so that the primitive line exists. If we click on the primitive button, we can confirm there is one primitive, although it has no attributes. Finally, if we click on the detail button, there are no attributes defined. Now, let's select and display my box. We can see the box is conformed by eight points and six faces or primitives. If we click on the points button, we can see there are eight rows that correspond to each point. And each point has the P attribute. If we click on the vertices button, we find out that there are 24 vertices. We have six faces and as each primitive is defined by four vertices, then we have 24 vertices in total. At the moment, the vertices have no attributes except for a reference to the source point. Now, if we click on the primitive button, we find the six primitives that correspond to the six faces of the box and there are no primitive attributes defined. Finally, if we click on the detail button, we find there are no attributes defined for this geometry. Now we understand that the information or data in Houdini is stored as attribute values in a geometry for its primitives, vertices or points. And we also know that the values can be floats, integers, vectors or strings. Well, that concludes this video. In upcoming videos, we'll be exploring Houdini's interface and navigation. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you soon in the next one.